Hey, I was in the neighborhood. Can I ask you a few questions? Yeah, come on in. Thank you. How are you today? I'm really well. First question. What was the first thing you thought of this morning? Caffeine. Okay, what's your favorite form of caffeine? Uh, English breakfast tea. Oh yeah? And where are you right now? I'm in Santa Fe. I'm going to go explore the city today. And why on earth are you here? Um, I don't have my kiddos this weekend and when I don't have them I like to fill my bucket by traveling. Okay, tell me about your kids. Who are they? Uh, my daughter is Evie. She's 11 and then my little guy Jack is 9. And what are you celebrating at the end of this month? Uh, Rare Disease Day. It's February 28th. And what's special about Rare Disease Day? Uh, both Jack and Evie have succinic semialdehyde dehydrogenase deficiency. Well, that's quite a mouthful. What is that? It's an inborn error of GABA metabolism. And tell me about the symptoms. Uh, it's a really broad phenotype. It goes everywhere from uh, speech impairment and learning disability all the way down to wheelchairs, feeding tubes, daily seizures. And how were Jack and Evie diagnosed? Uh, they were diagnosed, Evie was two, and it was through an organic acid urine screen. Uh, Jack didn't show any signs at the time, he was just born, but we had him uh, tested and he came back positive also. And what was it like? How did you feel when you got that diagnosis? Um, it was actually a relief. Um, for years with Evie, they kept telling me, just wait, uh, see what happens. But then when we got the diagnosis, it confirmed that I knew something was wrong. And what did you do immediately? On getting that diagnosis? I wrote down succinic semialdehyde dehydrogenase deficiency phonetically and I practiced over and over again until I could <laughs> say it properly. Okay and then what came next? Um, Jack and Evie started physical therapy, speech therapy, and occupational therapy. It seems like a lot can be accomplished with those therapies but is there a treatment yet for SSADH? Um, not yet but we're working on it. And how many people, what's the prevalence of SSADH? Uh, we have 60 diagnosed in the U.S., but we should have about 1,200. Uh, why are so many underdiagnosed? Uh, a lot of people get a diagnosis of epilepsy or developmental delay, and they don't know to go and look for the underlying genetic cause. And so, well, how do you know that so many are underdiagnosed? Uh, we did a prevalence study and it shows that one in 340,000 should have the disorder based on the carrier rate in the U.S. And so, as what's your plan to go and find those missing patients? Newborn screening. So why is there not uh, SSADH newborn screening as of today? Oh, because newborn screening was set up in the 60s and at the time they thought if you didn't have a treatment, there was no point in having screening for it. I assume you don't agree with that. Oh, not at all. Why is that? Um, there's so much to be gained by having an accurate diagnosed patient population. You can join clinical trials, you can um, have a natural history study, you get support from the patient community. And tell me about Evie, what's the most beautiful thing about her? Uh, she is the most loving, kind child you'll ever meet. And what's her biggest struggle? Oh, she wants friends and she wants to be so social, but people don't understand her. Huh. And what's the biggest, uh, what's the best thing about Jack? Uh, he is a funny guy. Oh yeah, and what's his biggest struggle? Um, communication. So he uses both Proloquel on his iPad where he can pick different symbols and pictures and it speaks for him and then he also signs. And I thought only deaf people um, sign. You gotta think out of the box when your kiddos have a rare disease. And so we taught Jack so much sign language that um, he now goes to the school for the deaf. So, um, how does it work at that school? Um, they're really supportive and um, they communicate with him and he gets to learn and grow in his own natural language. I'm assuming both Jack and Evie are in special ed? Uh, yes, they both have an intellectual disability, so they both have an individual education plan. And what is it like dealing with the public school system? It's difficult. Uh, the schools are constrained by a lot. They want to do well, but they have a huge administrative burden and then financial concerns, so they can't always fulfill the needs they're supposed to. And Alice, what's your background? Um, I'm a structural engineer. I loved Legos growing up. And what are you doing now? Uh, I co-founded my own company, Spiragen, and it is focused on developing a treatment and commercializing it for SSADH. And Spiragen, that word, what does that mean? Um, it's really hard to name a company, and so we went to the Latin and we came up with Hope in Genetics. Mm, I like it. And so what is Spurgeon currently working on? 
Uh, we have just finished two projects, one on a GHB antagonist and then another Barnazol, which is an anti-epileptic, and now we're moving towards enzyme replacement therapy. And what's the best part about running Spurgeon? Um, I get to collaborate with some really great people. We have our researchers at WSU, Dr. Gibson and Roulet, and then we have the most amazing person that runs our patient group, Dr. Uh, Carolyn Hoffman, and then we have a bunch of collaborators that help us out constantly at Boston Children's, uh, led by Dr. Pearl. And what's been the biggest disappointment in R&D so far in SSADH? Oh, last year we had a clinical trial fail, in, um, which is common, but it hit so close to home. Um, so that was really tough. Well, what is it that makes um, studies in rare diseases so difficult? Uh, we don't have the patients diagnosed, and then once we have the patients diagnosed, there's such a burden on the families because they lack support, and so it's really hard to get recruitment for clinical trials. And so, with your background, what made you think you could run a biotech? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I really thought about it or not, but um, I am a structural engineer, and so I was doing large federal highway projects, and then um, bidding a project is very similar to running a grant. And so, all that you know now, would you do it again? Um, yes and no. Uh, knowing how hard it was, I don't know if I would do it again, but Jack and Evie live in my house, and I know so many of the families with the disorder, and we want healthy children. So back to the kids, what's your favorite thing to do with them? Uh, road trips. And who's funnier, Jack or Evie? Um, Jack is funnier. And what's your favorite part of being their mom? Uh, when they first wake up in the morning, they're so snuggly and sweet. Yeah. And what do you worry most about with your children? Not being there to take care of them forever. And what makes you think you need to be there to take care of them forever? intellectual disability, there's a high rate of neglect and abuse. What are their nicknames? Uh, Evie's easy. She is just Evie Bugs. But Jack is Jack, 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 Jack Ryan, Bubby, Buddy, Doo, Dooter, Jack of Beans. And um, what, what do you think Evie's going to do when she grows up? Uh, she's going to do something with animals. She is the most kind-hearted, tender person you've ever met, and she loves to take care of small things. How about Jack? Uh, that kid loves luggage. He's going to work at an airport. <laughs> and uh, what do you think the biggest challenge, challenge is going to be as they grow up? Um, they are going to have to find their place where they're accepted and find a purpose. And um, what do you think uh, has been a lifesaver for you? A uh, lifetime gym. Why is that? Um, they take my kids for two hours every day, so I get to fill my bucket by working out, and it gives me time to catch up on things. So what, what's, what's it really like being a single mom of two special needs kids? Um, it is a blessing curse, and so it brings a ton of wonderful people in my life, but it is a constant daily struggle. Yeah. Can I meet them? Yeah, come on. Hey kiddos, can Hi. I please ask you some questions? Yeah, yeah. Excellent, thank you. Jack, let's start with you, okay? What is your, Jack, wait. What is your favorite thing to eat? You. Pasta. Pasta, good. And what is your best joke? What do you call a bear with no teeth? What do you call a bear with no teeth? Gummy bear. Gummy bear. And what do you want to do when you Gummy grow up? Gummy bear. Work at the airport. Work at the airport. And what is the funniest noise? Hard noises. <laughs> and Jack, Jack, how do you get so strong? Healthy foods. Healthy foods. And what do you want to do when COVID is Go over? Go see the Scooby-Doo live show. Go and see the Scooby-Doo live show. Do you like school? Yes. And what's your favorite part of nighttime routine, Jack? Reading books. Yeah, I agree. Good job, Jack. Okay, Evie, can I ask you some questions? Yeah. What's your favorite food? Mac. Mac and cheese. And this is an important question. What do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to eat to your parents? What do you want Okay, so be on YouTube and work with animals. Mm -hmm. so and, 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 and you want to meet Stephen. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, who's your favorite crush? Mm -hmm. Who do you have a crush on? Stephen Sherry, that's right. Mm -hmm. Are you excited for middle school? Yeah. Yes. And is it possible to hug someone too much? No. No. And what is your cat's name? Tootsie Roll. Tootsie Roll. And what frustrates you the most? COVID. COVID, I agree with that. When COVID's over, do you want to go see anybody? Me too. Steven, right. Okay, and last question. 
What do you want everybody to do on Rare Disease Day? Celebrate! Celebrate! <laughs> <laughs>